I sat and waited. I knew her well. After fourteen years of marriage, yes. Her need to control every situation would make her rush home, do damage control, overpower everything else. I idly wondered what twist she would come up with. He should have thrown her through the noose and gotten caught. She was always smart, intriguing, planning, working out every angle. I was the most straightforward. If I had something on my mind, it usually came out of my mouth. For better or worse, I was inclined to make an immediate decision. She hated it. It irritated her to no end when all her work and all her carefully laid plans went to waste. Don't get me wrong, I usually give her what she wants. Why? Because I'm a guy, and guys generally don't sweat much. If she wanted it, and if it didn't break us financially or damage our relationship, she got it. It made her happy. And then she made me happy, and then we were both happy. Happy, happy, happy. It didn't take her long to realize that there was a line in my head that said, when you cross it, things can get really bad. I heard her describe it to a friend once when she didn't know I was around. I call it the magic moment. The moment when he gets so angry that nothing else matters. Not his friends, not his work, not me, nothing. When he reaches this point, he will be able to care less about what people think or whose feelings are hurt. I'll give you an example. He worked at his old company for 10 years, got a promotion, good reviews, they loved him. Then the management changed. They invited an expert. Two weeks later, the expert made a proposal, which they accepted. Everyone's work has changed. Bob really didn't care. He'd been there so long he knew almost everything. Then the blow came. The expert noted that employees are paid approximately 25% more than companies with corresponding positions in this field, so they are being laid off to achieve parity. He was told that his share was just under 5000 a year. He laughed at them. Let me be clear, he said. You want to cut our entire salary because that would bring us down to the local average, right? What efforts do you expect from us subsequently? The same amount or 25% less. One of the reasons this company is so successful is because it pays top dollars for best. You can't just come here, fill out an application, and start working. I had to go through four interviews, physical and psychological testing, before I was hired. You have a very strict attendance policy and strict safety procedures. Now, why would anyone go through this to get a job if you don't pay any more than the place down the street where you don't have to work nearly as hard and get the same salary? Over time, you will not have parity. You will have mediocrity. Your old employees will leave to get better jobs or easier working conditions. Production will suffer, accidents will occur, and morale will drop. He paused to catch his breath. The meeting was attended by four people from the corporation and an efficiency expert. They were all bright red. The decision still stands, said one of the corporate goons. It will come into force in three months. He smiled. Everything is fine. This is more than enough time to find another job. Consider this my notice. The day the cuts take effect will be my last day. There was a general uproar. The plant director assured the corporation that he would not leave. He was simply letting the air out. Imagine their surprise when he walked out the door three months later. They tried to get him to come back, shouting that they would tell all potential employers that he had left and quit his job. I've already found a job, he answered. Nine months later, most of the old employees had left, and many came to work for his new company. They brought in two corporate officers to try to convince him to return by offering him a good raise. He laughed, wished them luck, and left the restaurant. Once he makes a decision, no one in the world can change it. And while it might have seemed like a hasty decision at the time, he usually thought about it long and hard, and it doesn't make any difference about financial costs at all. Not for him. I can live without money, but not without self-respect. I've heard this ten times. I thought back in time trying to pinpoint when she began to think it was acceptable to have sex with another man. She's tried to get me to accept a lot of things over the years. Now she was going to Cancun for two weeks with friends, a couple who were on the verge of divorce and one who was married. She prepared a pretty good presentation. It would be nice to take a break from each other. It would make us stronger, blah, blah, blah. I told her that the idea sucked, 
The thought of her in a foreign country, on the beach, with a lot of alcohol in the company of a group of women, each of whom I viewed as a magnet for attracting thrills, was in fact not a very good idea. But it's your life, so do what you want. Just keep the price in mind. She had learned over the years that this was one of my catchphrases. This meant that I knew she was wrong, or it was a really bad idea. But I was tired of discussing it, and if she moved on, she would have to deal with the consequences. Just one more thing. I need my rings. If you're going to extend yourself to strangers, you're going to do it without them. She exploded and started arguing. I just sat there until she ran out of steam. While you were talking, I thought about something else. You won't have time to rent an apartment while on vacation, so do you want me to put your things in storage or take them to your parents' house? She sulked, she screamed, she refused to cancel plans. Three days before she was supposed to board a plane, she returned home to an empty house and received a note. I thought it over and decided that I don't want to live here. Now you can travel with a clear conscience, without fear of betraying anyone. Bon voyage. Yes, and keep the rings. They no longer have any value to me. Her slutty friends tried to persuade her to forget me and leave, but she tried to find me for two days. I took some of my vacation and went fishing. I was idly wondering if she had boarded the plane as I made another cast, determined to get that big fish I had missed last summer, when I heard the sound. I thought you'd be here. Thanks for ruining a really good vacation for me. As you can see, I didn't go. Are you happy now? I felt the rod tremble. Maybe Mr. Big decided to play. Hell no, I'm not happy. It's hard to understand that if I were a little weaker, you would go away. Spend a hell of a lot of time knowing that I was under your thumb. Why are you here? Are you trying to ruin my weekend? Will not work. Do you know why? Because you won't be here. Go home, go somewhere else, just get the hell away from me. Since you didn't go, I'll fire the private detective and settle for irreconcilable differences instead of adultery. Damn, it's so easy these days, we can do it in four months. Mr. Big appeared, he burst out of the water, dancing on his tail. He weighed eight pounds, maybe ten. Crap. It was at that moment that she attacked me, cursing like a sailor. I was thrown into the water, and Mr. Big relaxed a little, spat out the hook, and, with a slap of his tail, went back into the depths. She screamed and laughed at the same time. The water was just below waist level, but damn cold in early April. I walked out slowly. Now, maybe you'll talk to me. I don't want a divorce, damn it. You are better... That was all she had time to say before I pushed her into the lakey. She slid a little in the dirt, flailing her arms in an attempt to keep her balance before losing it and falling backwards. I noticed that she was very well dressed and that there was nothing under that short skirt when she went into the water. Now she didn't look really sexy, covered in dirt and grass. I saw that she was completely without underwear and her nipples were erect, indicating the cold. She started to pull out, taking a deep breath to start screaming when I pushed her back. When she rose to her feet again, I raised my hand. Listen, do not say. If you open your mouth before I'm done, I swear I'll jump in and hold you underwater until you stop bubbling. Nod your head if you understand. She must have believed me because she nodded slowly. So, what should we talk about? We both know that if I had given in, you'd be having sex with someone else right now. Deny it all you want. We both know it's true. I hope your slut friends will support you. You will need friends. Maybe you'll spend your time trying to steal each other's men. God knows they all ran after me even knowing that you and I were married. And now I'm leaving. Don't follow me, don't call me, don't resist when the papers are served. As I left, I heard her crying and calling my name. It's no surprise that she was struggling with the divorce, but I wondered why. She hired a really good lawyer who got to the case of one Edith Vine, a Judge Judy wannabe who was notorious for trying to keep people together. And we had to see a psychologist. I almost received an order of contempt for talking incessantly. This is just nonsense. Stupidity, Your Honor. I don't want to find out anything. I don't want to save the marriage. I just want to leave. She was very cold to me. Mr. James... You don't have to like it, but you have to go, and I better hear that you're participating. You understand? 
I was mad, so I actually said it. This bitch was so full of shit, her eyes turned brown. I understand, Your Honor. But tell me, didn't you go for a consultation with your recently departed husband? Did this help? I still seem to remember how the divorce went. Let me ask you a hypothetical question, Meme. If I had said that you were a terrible judge with no understanding of the human condition, and if you had lost your re-election bid, it would have angered you more because I dared to say it or because I was right. I've never seen anyone go from pale to red and back again so quickly. She slammed the hammer angrily. Take this man and charge him with contempt of court. My lawyer and close friend jumped up in an instant. Wait a second, Your Honor. Are you going to jail a man for asking a hypothetical question? Your race opponent will eat it. Please, he didn't mean anything like that. He's right, Your Honor. It was just a question. I take my words back. I just couldn't resist. However, when you lose in November and become an ordinary citizen on the street like the rest of us, I will definitely find you and tell you in detail about your abilities. Okay, I dodged the bullet of contempt, but she got back at me by raising the mandatory sessions from 6 to 12. The first three sessions were very unpleasant for both her and the therapist. I love to read, and instead of answering with real words, I use quotes from books and poems. Shakespeare was a goldmine. His work was full of cheating whores. They broke through my defenses in the fourth session. Maybe I was tired. Maybe I wasn't as focused as I should have been. When she cried this time, I realized that she really meant it. Other times she did it too easily. This time she couldn't stop. The therapist asked why I married her. Because I loved her. I knew what she was like. I watched her all through high school and most of college. She manipulated everyone around her to get what she wanted. That's why I never tried to date her. Eventually she had to ask me out. I went because I was curious. What does she need from me? I wasn't rich. I don't think I'm that good looking. And I wasn't into gaming. We were at a party thrown by one of her friends. Her boyfriend, who she broke up with, was there. She tried to use me to prove that she could have anyone she wanted. So we better submit. It took me about three minutes to figure it out. After that, I decided to have some fun. I barely paid attention to her for the rest of the evening, danced with her friends, flirted, groped her a little, everything where she could see me. She was furious. Finally, she pulled me outside and asked, What the hell are you doing? You should be with me. The one you came with, you know? Behave yourself. She was shocked by my laughter. What the hell do you think I'm doing? Apparently, I'm the scapegoat here for your boyfriend, who you forgot to tell you you're still dating. I decided that since you lost the case, I would troll you a little. You need to find new friends. Loyalty must not be in their vocabulary. I already have three numbers, and Sue almost told me that after I take you home tonight, I should come back for a little private after party. Apparently, no one had ever talked to her like that before. She started crying. Until recently, I looked at her pointedly. I could never resist a crying woman. I told her I'd make a deal. She acts like she was my date tonight and I was hers. We returned to the house and she clung to my hand all night. We ignored everyone else and danced only with each other. After a while, we really relaxed and had a good time. I think she was very surprised when I left her at the door with just a little kiss. I had no intention of meeting her again, but she saw me as a challenge. She slowly penetrated my heart. I immediately told her that I was not into her games. We broke up a couple of times before she got the message. In short, we got married. When I was a child, I had a pig. It's possible that I could become the father of a child, but it's unlikely. When we found out about this, I proposed marriage to her. She chewed me out. I wanted to adopt, but she made one excuse after another until I realized it was too late. Now, looking back, that's a good thing. But, counselor, she has slowly returned to her old habits. Complacency, I suspect. These were small things, but over time they became bigger. What she didn't understand was that I didn't care what kind of car she wanted or what style of furniture was in the house. Such things don't mean the slightest to me. If it makes her happy, fine. But then she changed jobs and made new friends. She started wanting bachelorette parties at night. Again, I trusted her, so it didn't matter. 
She began to come home later and later, and one evening she came at two o'clock with disheveled hair, wrinkled clothes, and smeared lipstick. This was the beginning of the end. She knew she had screwed up big time. She apologized, saying that she was drunk and things didn't go further than kissing. I left her for two weeks. She begged, creed, swore that she would go to a psychologist. I was weak. I still love that stupid bitch. I still can't say why. Things have gotten better. She realized she had control issues and really worked on them. She changed jobs again to get away from the sluts. Jumped from the frying pan into the fire, in my opinion. If the last group were sluts, then this one is the screaming sluts. Slowly, very slowly, she got along with them. Bachelorette parties have begun again. Then the Cancun story came up. I looked at the resort and it catered to singles and people with alternative lifestyles. I had no doubt that if she had been like that, she would have returned a slut who had broken her vows, and it burned up her entire vacation, ruining the plans we had already made. I tried to talk to her, but she used platitudes and nonsense that came straight from the scammer's guide. I reached my limit and gave her an ultimatum. Stay with me and try to work on our marriage. Go and come back to the divorce ball. She refused to cancel the meeting, so I packed my things and left before her. She must have had a mental attack because she never got on the plane. By then it was already too late. I started the procedure. And here we are. Yes, she's sorry. Yes, she will go to counseling. But is this enough? Has she learned anything? Can she change? My question is, do I want to be here long enough to see? I finally took it back, hoping for the best. Why? Because deep down I really loved her. But I made her pay. I held her in tight mittens and made her sign a post-wedding agreement. Irreconcilable differences and it was 50-50. Adultery and the offending party walked away with the clothes on their back. It was killing her. She loved the house and all her toys, but she knew that this was her only chance. We were good for a couple more years. Then she began to change clothes. It was so gradual that I didn't notice at first. It was just little things. But when it sped up, I realized it. I noticed her smug grin, especially since she thought I couldn't see her. I called the detectives. Two weeks later, they gave me their results. Unfortunately, I wasn't surprised. Peter Cummings, the little weasel she worked with. According to the report, he was nothing more than a gigolo seeking wealthy older women to subsidize his lifestyle. Handsome, probably. I didn't like his eyes. He looked at her Mercedes convertible, the rings on her fingers, her perfect hair, and smelled the money. He flattered her. She gave him small gifts. He must have been good in bed as many times as they dated. I never saw them together and did not ask for the report to be given to the lawyer I chose. She broke the camel's back with a straw. I waited until I knew they were together now and sent her a message. Emergency. Come home. Call. No messages. She called me back three minutes later, breathing heavily. What's happened? This is not really an emergency, more of a courtesy visit. I'm divorcing you. Have Peter follow you. You can leave your car, and he will help you pack your clothes. Leave your jewelry on the dressing table, along with house and car keys. There was dead silence for several seconds until she came to her senses. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about the post-wedding agreement you signed. Do you remember? The document you signed to prove how unfounded my lack of faith in you was? I'm talking about you having sex with this scumbag for at least three months. I'm talking about you being in issue 334 of the seasons, naked except for a garter belt. What color is it? Lavender or purple? Live resolution can be quite muddy at times. Here I should call you a slut, but I can't because you pay for it with your little gifts and loans. I saw her looking around wildly, trying to see the cameras. Stop looking. You'll never find them. And tell Peter that the leather strap he's wearing looks absolutely ridiculous on a man of his age and build. There's a site on the internet called Funny Farm that has stupid pictures. Tell him I posted it about 20 minutes ago. I just became famous. He doesn't need to thank me. I have to go. The locksmith should be here any minute. Wait, I'll be right there. Please, I can explain everything.
Curiosity got the better of me, so I grabbed a glass of my favorite wine and waited. I heard her drive up, her heels clicking quickly on the path as she ran in. She looked around wildly until she saw me in the office. I lit the fireplace and found the fire soothing. She slowly approached me, and I stood up. Sit down, I commanded, pointing to the back of the chair which I placed opposite the sofa. She sighed to complain about my tone, but changed her mind and sat down. Guilt, I said, pouring myself another drink. She nodded, whistly remaining silent. I poured a glass, handed it to her, and sat down again. Give me a second to get comfortable. I love fairy tales, but they tend to put me to sleep, so if I doze off, forgive me. She trembled, a sharp answer on her lips before her mind intervened. Honey, you know that I love you, right? She paused, waiting for my answer, and when I remained silent, she continued. I'm really sorry. Peter was a mistake. But when we finished, I told him about it when I left. I'm really sorry. Maybe you'll do better with the next one. Her anger exploded. Really, Shane? You can't help here. I laughed. I'm really sorry. I didn't know I was supposed to help. How can I help you? Find another lover? There are a few guys in the office who might be interested, but most of them have pretty high standards. Maybe we could get nude photos of you back from Peter and I could show them the goods. I could do a review. You're pretty good when you want to be. Do you think this could work? She turned pale, surprised at how much I actually knew. She was pretty stupid in my opinion, allowing her lover to take nude glamour shots of her. Please stop being mean to me. I'll tell you what, I'll do it if you just tell me why. Why, knowing that you can lose everything? Are you so stupid? I don't know exactly why. Let me give you an example. Do you remember a pair of Nikes I've been wearing for years? They are past their prime and are pretty worn out. But they stay on my feet so well that I can't bear the thought of giving them up. This is what my love for you is like. Sturdy, comfortable, and I will never leave you. When you see a pair of red four-inch heels in a store window, you know they're not practical. They'll probably hurt your feet if you wear them too long, but you know you'll look and feel sexy in them. Them for a while. These shoes were Peter Fun for a while, but I couldn't wear them every day. Do you understand, honey? It was just a fling, swaying a little in your heels, knowing you could go home and wear something that made you feel good. You understand? I woke up. I think I understand. Thanks for explaining it to me. I went to the closet in the hallway and took my jacket. She followed me. What do you understand? You won't throw me out today, will you? No. My lawyer says I can't force you to leave until the papers are served, and even then I have to give you a reasonable amount of time to get your things. He suggested two weeks. So you'll probably be fine for two and a half, maybe three weeks. But you won't be able to sleep with me. I'll be a gentleman and move into the spare bedroom. I know how much you love that custom shower you told me to install. Her jaw dropped. I continued. I'll tell you what. If you don't fuss, I'll help you find a good apartment, put down money, turn everything on, and pay three months of bills. You make decent money, but you've never had to pay bills, so I'll help you create a budget. You probably won't have anything left over for spa visits, expensive dinners, or shopping trips. But if you save, you can afford an evening out every two weeks or so. I'll even find you a decent used car, but you'll be responsible for the insurance. It's up to you to decide whether to take it or not, but in any case, you will leave. I reached into the hallway closet and pulled out my favorite black felt hat. It was vintage, straight out of the 60s. I had a great uncle who never left home without a hat, and when he died he left me all of his hats, 31, all in excellent condition and kept in their original boxes. They suited me perfectly. I received them at a time when they were just coming into fashion. I thought I looked good in them, as do many of the ladies in my office. My dear wife said I looked stupid in them. I set the desired angle and opened the door. She was still trying to comprehend my words. We need to continue the conversation. Try to figure it out. It's already ten. Where are you going? I removed her hand from mine. Buy shoes. I think I'll look for something young and sporty, or maybe I'll find something with cool Italian leather. 
If I can afford it, I'll probably get both. Do not wait for me. I laughed as I drove away, knowing she would press the speed dial button on my phone. It will ring. She should hear it clearly on the kitchen table. In the end, I got both in one package. She left me in the dust in her six-inch heels. Ten years younger, she was smart, sexy, straightforward, and didn't play games. Goddess. I idolized the ground she walked on. She bought me hats for birthdays and anniversaries. Now I have more than fifty. Gwen tried to resist, but when her lawyer looked at the prenuptial agreement, he urged her to accept my proposal. I didn't want her Mercedes, so I sold it, took half the money, and bought her a four-year-old little Chevrolet. She even thanked me. She got married a couple of years later, and as far as I know, we no longer move in the same circles. They seem happy. I know that she was treated for quite a long time. Funny story. I actually went to court when my divorce was finalized, even though my lawyer said it wasn't necessary. I came across the judge who was handling my first attempt and ordered us to consult. Now she was just an ordinary city girl. She was there during her second divorce. I was almost accused of contempt because I couldn't stop laughing. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.